Good morning and welcome to worship this morning online. We have a couple of announcements this morning as we get ready for worship. Um, there is a pinned comment um, and two links in that below. One is the giving link. Um, we would love to help you be a part of what is going on here at Forest Hill and we invite you to give to be a part of all that is happening in this wonderful place. And the other link is a connect link. We would love to know that you're visiting with us. We know that there are people among us um, who are worshiping with us each week, and we would love to know that you're visiting with us so that we can reach out to you. Today, there will be no youth, and our confirmation class that was scheduled to begin today will be postponed, so there are no other events happening today at Forest Hill. And tomorrow, we will have the office will be closed in observance of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So we hope that you will celebrate this day in a special way, um, remembering the wonderful contributions of Martin Luther King Jr. To our, um, to our country and all of the justice ministry that he was involved in. So with those things on our hearts, I invite you to begin our worship with a time of prayer. Let us pray. Holy and loving Lord, we give you thanks for this time of worship. We give you thanks that we are able to be connected virtually in this day we give you thanks for the many ways that you show up in our life and lord as we come before you in worship we ask you to show up in powerful ways that you would come upon us with your holy spirit that you would grant us peace in these moments and that you would speak deeply to our hearts as we lift our hearts in worship and honor of you all this we pray and ask in your holy and precious name amen and I invite you to join us in singing our opening hymn, hymn number 529, How Firm a Foundation. this man. 
Would you join as we, together as we share the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we come to a time of prayer this morning, we have these folks who are, we were, are remembering in prayer. Barbara Horgan, who's going to have surgery uh, in a week and a half. Jewel Alexander, who continues to improve. Ann Cook, who is home and slowly improving. Martha Inslee, who is also at home and growing stronger. We remember Betsy Bennett, who is in a real struggle with cancer right now. Jewel Ballard and Wally Boswell. Wally has uh, uh, his crushed, uh, not crushed, uh, lost word, uh, but his back is giving him a lot of trouble. We'll remember him. We remember Lupita Tella, who had, whose brother in Mexico died this week, and uh, we remember her. And we remember Connie Moss, who's had cataract surgery and then wasn't feeling well after that. So let us now bow our heads and be in prayer. The heavens are telling the glory of God. O oh God, we join all nature and the hosts of heaven in singing praise to you. We give thanks for the gift of life, for the joy of relationships, for the healing power of laughter, for the goodness of family and work, for opportunities to learn and grow in our faith, to realize the wonder and responsibility you have bestowed upon us to care for your world and for our neighbors. We remember that our lives are filled with connections to you, to the earth, to each other, because you created us for community. Yet we live our lives in so many disconnected ways. Anger and selfishness isolate us. So we struggle with many issues around immigration. Fear and uncertainty make us hesitant to care and reach out in love, so we argue about individual freedoms. Electronic devices and social media, which help us keep feel connected, often cut us off from others. 
and make us more prejudiced and jaundiced. And we watch our children dealing with an addiction whose effect we don't fully understand. COVID has caused us to discover how much we need and are blessed by being connected in a community. We find we hunger for human touch and for times to eat together, to serve those in need, to worship, and to see faces that are not covered with masks. But we are connected just as you are connected in a mysterious way we call the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we thank you for the gift of family, the gift of friends, the gift of church, the gift of neighbors, the gift of opportunities to share love and joy and faith. Help us to be aware of opportunities for connection with those in need, those who mourn, those who are sick, those who are lonely and filled with sadness, those who are weary and worn from caring for those in need. We pray for Barbara, for Jewel, for Ann, for Martha, for Betsy, for Jewel, for Wally as he deals with compression fractures, for Lupita as she mourns her brother, for Connie as she grows stronger. And we pray for all our medical workers, for our school teachers and students, for our essential workers. The old Negro spiritual reminds us that your toe bone connected to your foot bone, your foot bone connected to your heel bone, your heel bone connected to your ankle bone, your ankle bone connected to your leg bone. Help us to see our connections to you and to one another and to all the people we meet. May we learn to live in a community of giving and receiving love that reflects the way the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit give and receive love. We offer our prayers in the strong name of Jesus, praying as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Our offertory scripture this morning comes from Luke 6, verse 38. Give, and it will be given to you, a good portion, packed down, firmly shaken, and overflowing, will fall into your lap. I am convinced and have been convinced for a long time that when we worry much less about our budget than the things that we can do for God, that God does incredible things. And I have experienced that over my time, not only in ministry and here at Forest Hill, but even more so in the past two years. So we are um, hard at work in the church office doing our statistical reporting, finishing up the end of the year, looking back at what we were able to do in the world um, here at Forest Hill. And the picture that we got to paint this year was really absolutely beautiful. So while our giving has been down, we have worked very hard to manage our expenses, to be good stewards of the resources that we have. And so as we ended 2021, we ended with an overage. Our income over our expenses netted a positive cash flow of 27,000, um, I had a right, $27,623. That is amazing and wonderful. That means that we met our needs, we paid our portion,
abortion months. We did everything that we needed to do here at Forest Hill. And beyond that, we are able to do even more missional giving than we did in 2021 with the resources that we had. We had an overage that we were going to be able to live out in mission in a new and powerful way in 2022. As we begin this series, I'm inviting you to pray about and think about ways that we can connect with our community, ways that we can take our overage from last year and bless our community in a powerful and tangible way. So we have that overage that was income over expenses, and in addition to that, in 2021, our total missional giving was $91,000. $371. Let me say that for you again. Our missional giving, the money that we as far as Hill put out into the world as missional giving to do mission in our community and our world was $91,379. That's in addition to our apportionments that work in the United Methodist Church to do good work in our community in our world. That's just what we did. That is amazing. And that should be celebrated. There is so much goodness to be seen in that. Not just the numbers piece of that, but because those numbers, those dollars that we are doing in mission, that you're making a difference in our world. People come to know the love of God and the care that we have because we are doing goodness in the world in the midst of a pandemic. So I want to pause. I want us to pause and to give thanks. To give thanks that God continues to use us. Give thanks that together we are doing amazing things. That when we love God, when we are faithful, when we give of our tithes and our gifts, something amazing happens. We have more than we ever need. We are blessed. We have a big measure packed down, firmly shaken, and overflowing so that we can do amazing things that honor God and give life to others. As I look forward to 2022, I can only imagine and dream about how God will use us. But I can look back to 2021 and say that we have been a place of hope, that we have lived out our theme of 2021, bringing hope to this community and sharing the love of God. And we did that together. So may we continue to give thanks for the ways that God uses us, may we continue to love others well as we faithfully give to honor God and to be connected to those around us in love and grace. And I invite you to join us in singing our second hymn, Be Thou My Vision.
Our scripture this morning comes from Romans 12, verse 5. In the same way, though there are many of us, we are one body in Christ, and individually we belong to each other. Over the past two years, we have learned to connect in new ways. Disconnecting and attempting to reconnect again. In our disconnecting and reconnecting, we have learned some important lessons. And at times, we have lost beautiful pieces of communal living. Connection is essential to our physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional well-being as humans. So our theme for 2022 is connect. We will explore how we can better connect to God, to one another, to our community, and to our world. Together we will connect in ways that bring joy and goodness to our world as we bring honor and glory to God. In order to connect in the most meaningful ways, we as a community of faith need to be looking at the world around us to see and understand what is happening so we can make a difference. This is something that I've really been interested in since early in the pandemic. How is the world around us changing and what is our place as the church in this very moment? I believe and have always believed that the local church is vital to connecting to our community, to offering love and grace and hope and connection in the world. We share the love of God by caring for others and for working in the world for goodness. So we are sitting in this unique moment in history where the gift of connecting that we hold dear as a church is coming as a place in the world that I believe is vital and necessary for the goodness of our world. This moment is an opportunity, and if we get it right, we'll be able to live out our discipleship in important ways that bring about abundant life for others. But in order to do that, in order to fully step into that place, we need some time to discern, we need some time to really look at what is happening around us and to ask ourselves, how do we connect in this moment? To discern where we go from here, we need to stand back and take a good look at where here is. The landscape of the world has changed and in that changing, we have goodness, and we also have challenges. So in order to prepare for this sermon series on Connect, I took some time to look at some research, which is a fun thing to do on cold January days. 
one of the most helpful resources that I uncovered were articles and surveys from Pew Research. And Pew Research goes out into the world and asks people just like us, how are we feeling? What are we doing? What, how are we living our daily lives? And they also consult experts who look at trends and data and they begin to look at what might happen in the future. Now I say might happen because we know that no one can predict the future and if we have learned anything over the past few years of our life is that it's very hard to even plan what we're going to be doing next week, let alone very far into the future. But if we looked at the trends, we're going to be able to see some things that could be clues as to how we can more faithfully live out being God's people in the world. So the biggest changes over the past two years come around technology, how we connect through technology. We know it's had positive and negatives. Positives? I realize the irony of this very moment that I am preaching to you as you sit at home through the gift of technology. This is a snow day like no other snow days. We're tucked inside of our homes and yet we're still able to worship. That is a gift that has come from the last few years. We are still connected, but in a very different way from snow days of the past. Technology has allowed us to stay connected over the past two years. I have spent much less time commuting to meetings. I just walk into my office and shut the door and click on a Zoom link and there I am, connected to a meeting. We have seen the ease with which resources have become available. Telehealth was not something that we did very much five years ago. But in this season, we are now able to have some of our doctor's appointments online, which is wonderful because we don't have to drive and sit and wait in the waiting room. It has also opened up resources for mental health for some people, where they weren't able to get to a counseling center before, now they can have counseling from the convenience of their home. In our world, at the Jones household, we have, um, over the past two years, gotten acquainted with something called DoorDash. And DoorDash is an app that you just pick out the restaurant that you want, you order your food, you hit submit, somebody goes to the restaurant, picks it up, brings it to your doorstep, rings the doorbell, and ta-da, your meal is right before you. I've also done um, things where I order online at a store and then I drive up and just have it delivered to my car. Some people have had their groceries delivered. The ways in which we are connecting and doing life have changed, and they're not going to change back. We enjoy the convenience. There have also been negative effects of this. The ways of interacting in the world have changed the way and frequency with which we interact with people. When Wes prayed, he said something that really hit my heart. We long to connect with other people. We long to see everybody's face. We want this place of connection. We want to see people, what I like to say, in 3D. When we had spent so much time on our screens and I would see somebody, I would say, oh my goodness, you look so good in 3D. We miss that. I saw someone in Lowe's this week who talked about how they were missing connecting to people. For some of us extroverts, we missed that really early on. I had a running total of how many hugs I was missing each week, and that could only last three weeks before I had to stop because it was overwhelming. For others, this hasn't been quite as hard. For people who maybe are a little more introverted, this season hasn't been as hard as those who are extroverted. But now that we're two years into it, we're all longing for connection. The move to rely on more technology, it means that people will be left behind. People with less access to technology and people who don't have the skills or the desire to keep up with the changing technology. If technology becomes a primary way of connecting in our world, 
then many people will struggle. In this space of changing connection, the church has a gift to share, the gift of intentional connection. We are wired to be a communal people. Connecting is the good gift of the church, the gift that we know how to do, the gift that is deeply within our DNA. Romans 12, 5, that I read just a few moments ago, says that we belong to each other. We are connected through Christ. Belonging is something we all want. It's our human nature to want to belong, to have a place that is our own. Belonging means that we are part of something. And one of the ways that we belong as Christians is in the body of Christ, connected to other Christians. God created us as a communal people. As far back as history goes, people belong to a tribe, a group, or a family. And that sense of connectedness, it comforts us, it nurtures us, it sustains us, it is a beautiful gift that we need because we are wired that way. While our world is trying to figure out the balance of connecting and reconnecting and disconnecting, we have this gift, we as the body of Christ have this gift of understanding that we need belonging. We understand that a true sense of of connectedness means we are connected to one another and to God. When we belong, we are part of the whole. We receive the benefits of communal living. Support, care, kindness, grace, love. And we share the responsibility of what it means to belong to one another. Last week, Wes talked about how we commit to living together and supporting each other in our baptismal vows. When we make that vow in our baptism and when we make that vow when someone is baptized in our presence, in the presence of the church, we commit to putting the needs of the body before our individual desires. We are, connect, we are a connection of people that thrive when we are serving, when we are active in the world, not when we are consumers of a product. That's not what the church is called to be. The church is called to be a body of Christ that is at work in the world, serving, moving, making a difference. Connection and belonging move us to be more than we can be alone. Connection and belonging, when they are done right, they empower us to do good in the world, to open up our arms and say, come to this place where you too can have connection and belonging to God and to others. In the struggle of the disconnecting and reconnecting in the world in new ways, I think our world is attempting to try to figure out what is missing. It seems that we are missing these small gestures of give and take. The moments when we ask how someone is. How are you? How are your parents doing? The moments when in conversation we get to say, I lost my pet and I am sad. These moments that don't seem like they're big enough to intentionally go out and share with someone, but these moments of life that just happen to come up when we are with each other. When we are sitting around the table, when we are talking, when we are experiencing life together. Those small things, I believe, is what we are missing. But it's those small things of life that make up the majority of what is truly important, what makes us who we are. It's those small things that build trust and remind us that other people care. Take worship, for example. 
When we watch online, we can worship God, we can honor God, we can do all of the goodness of that, but we are missing a piece of connection to each other. Even as I stand here this morning and, and do worship in this space and worship God and know that the Holy Spirit is connecting us, I also know that there is very few, there are very few people in this room and I am missing that connection, the connection of knowing that we are in a place together worshiping God. And when we walk out of worship and we walk to the back and we greet one another and we smile and we ask, how are you? Those are moments of connection that matter. They matter to us. In Hebrews 10, 24 through 25, it says, Let us consider each other carefully for the purpose of sparking love and good deeds. Don't stop meeting together with other believers, which some people have gotten into the habit of doing. Instead, encourage each other, especially as you see the day drawing near. Worship. It is a communal function that helps us to know each other. I fear that if we as a society don't find ways to connect in tangible ways, ways, of course, that are safe, that protect one another, but if we don't do those things, I'm afraid we'll lose our support systems. And the primary way that people know what other people need is just journeying with them in everyday life. All people need to belong, to have people that care about the little things, not just people in the church, Everybody. And see, that's where I think we are. I think that's where we have this moment as the church. I believe with all of my heart that we do this so well that we can do this in incredible ways that change and bless our community. This is a gift that we not only just share inside of our walls, but this is a gift that we can take out into the world and we can say in this moment when life is really hard and you don't have any place to connect the way you used to, come here. Our arms are open. We are people who love God. We love a God whose arms are open, who desires connected who helps us to see the beauty of communal living, who nurtures our souls, who empowers and strengthens us and sends us back into the world to continue to offer the invitation, come here and belong with us. I believe with all of my heart that this is the gift that the church can give in this very moment. To say you can belong here. You can find connection here. You can find love and support here. How do we do that? We have to figure it out. We have to sit in these moments and decipher what will we do. We have to sit long enough to get a plan, but not so long that the moment passes us. And so I invite you to come along in this sermon series. To see where we can connect with God, with others, with the world, so that we can do a powerful and wonderful thing. I believe in the local church because the local church is my place of belonging, it's my place to be connected, it's my place to nurture my love of God, it's the place that strengthens and encourages me. It's the place that empowers me to go out in the world. It has given me support and encouragement in a season that has been so hard. So I began this series with a confession. It's been hard for me to have a vision for what the world looks like for the past 22 months. I have felt like it was a victory to survive day to day, week to month, week to week, month to month. But my spirit's getting antsy. 
I'm ready to do something big and bold in the world. I am ready to have a vision and a goal and a dream that is so big that only God can do it. So we can stand in those moments of holy awe and wonder and say, look what God is doing and we get to be a part of that. Not just so we can stand in that space and be enriched and empowered and to feel good, but also because I believe this is what we are called to do, to be a place of love and belonging in the world, to do good things. And so as we embark upon this series of Connect, I invite you, I ask you to commit to pray for our church to pray for our leadership, to pray for our impact, to pray for our discernment. And I want you to dream with me. I want you to dream big dreams of what God can do through us. Big dreams that we have to rely on God for. Big dreams that connect us to our community, that offer places of belonging, that make a difference in people's lives here and now. I invite you, encourage you, ask you to be in prayer about this because I truly believe that this is a beautiful moment in the history of, of the church and our church. And together we can do big and beautiful things that bring glory and honor to God. Let us pray. Holy Lord, we stand in this moment and we just ask that you would speak deeply to our hearts, that you would empower us to do good and faithful ministry, that you will show us places that we need to connect, places that we don't even know in this moment. And Lord, we trust you with that. We trust you with big dreams that you can plant in our hearts and in our minds. We ask that you unite us together in a vision that ask us to step boldly into the world, but that will bring goodness and glimpses of your kingdom here on earth. Lord, we thank you that you do put passion in our hearts, that you love us fully and completely, and that you continue to use us to do good in the world. All this we ask and pray in the strong and faithful name of Jesus, our Lord. Our closing hymn is hymn number 557, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. You never know about life. You never know about the weather. You never know what will come next. But may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, 
and the communion of the Holy Spirit surround you and hold you this very day and forever. Amen.